Hello everyone! In this video we're going to be sending a single stage of solid rocket goodness all the way to Minmus. This idea arose from the subscriber challenge I'm doing right now, the Monte Carlo Kerbling Challenge, where I have challenged viewers to race down a river canyon. Inspired by an SRB submission to the original challenge, Strats and Blitz had the idea of trying to do the new river canyon course, the longer one, on a single stage of SRB. This in turn made me think back to a mission I did a few years ago where I just went to Kerbin Orbit and back on a single stage of SRB. I figured that with some of the aerodynamic trickery we figured out since then that I should be able to get all the way to Minmus. So let's talk for a bit about why this challenge is challenging. The most obvious drawback of the solid rocket engines is that they have no throttle. They have a constant thrust. Once you start them, they burn all the way through at that constant thrust. But really the more significant challenge is that they just aren't that efficient. The specific impulse of the most efficient solid rocket engines we have available are about two thirds of that of the more efficient conventional rocket engines. On a single stage design, this limits our maximum possible delta V to about two thirds of what we would have with conventional rocket engines, which is in turn a lot less than what we would get with the LBN engines or the ion engines. So to that end, I've tried to eliminate as much dry mass that's not the engines as possible. We do have some wings on this design. Wings are very helpful because they decrease dramatically the delta V that we lose to gravity. However, the wing area put on this is about the minimum of what this is going to be able to fly with. These efforts have gotten me to a total delta V for this plane of 3,760 meters per second of delta V measured at sea level which is equivalent to 4,214 meters per second of delta V in a vacuum. Because we're going to be doing the ascent starting at sea level, the actual change in velocity will be somewhere between there. Quite a lot of aerodynamic trickery and clipping has occurred in this. This plane actually has nine of the large Clydesdale boosters, one thoroughbred booster, two kickback boosters, and 66 of the small shrimp boosters. And we're going to get this mission started and we'll see how those are used. On the runway, I have fired up seven of the Clydesdale engines, staggered a little bit to prevent this from tearing itself apart. We want to be able to reach a high speed very quickly because we don't have much wing area, so we're going to need that speed to stay in the air. Firing a lot of the boosters at low altitude does lose some delta V due to the lower specific impulse closer to sea level. But we're also saving delta V because we're losing less delta V on the ascent. At five kilometers, we fire up the eighth of the large boosters. We're going to need this impulse to get to orbit. I didn't want to do this at sea level because then we would have reached too high of a speed and burnt up before we climbed. The front loaded burn on this ascent means that we're going fast enough now that I could just put the nose prograde and we're going to coast all the rest of the way to space. Due to the heavily clipped design, as well as the minimal wing area, this coasts extremely efficiently, and there's very little delta V loss despite the high speed that we reached at a low altitude. Once we get to space, the largest booster will be quite excessive to circularize in orbit, so we're going to be using the next largest booster, the Thoroughbred SRB. And as plotted in advance, this had just enough delta V to put us into a low Kerbin circular orbit. In orbit, we have 1,414 meters per second of change in velocity. Most of this is from the single large booster that we have remaining, and we're going to be using that to do most of the work in getting us to Minmus. After this ninth and final of the large Clydesdale SRBs finished burning, we're going to have two kickback and 66 shrimp SRBs remaining. The first design that I gave this a trial run of with had three of the kickback boosters, but what I discovered was that there was no way to actually divide up this delta V into the maneuvers I needed to do. So I needed more of the shrimp boosters to give me more of that flexibility to actually split the maneuvers where I wanted to. The subsequent stages actually fire in the reverse direction. This comes at the cost of looking a bit ridiculous, but it does improve our weight balance, especially later in the mission. 
the engines facing the reverse direction also meant that I had to reverse all the maneuvers before I actually completed them. I did come to regret not including some of the separatrons on this design for fine adjustments, but I was still able to plan a rendezvous with the moon to give us a gravity assist. After the gravity assist off of the moon, I used one more of the shrimp engines to adjust our approach of Minmus. Again, this would have been much better done with a separatron. The injection into Minmus and the subsequent braking to a low Minmus orbit is, despite the SRBs, pretty normal. There's no real need for fine corrections here. We're just going to do one large burn down to a elliptical Minmus orbit and then another down to a low circular Minmus orbit. The landing on Minmus is going to get a bit tricky. I want to save some delta V here, so I don't want to slow all the way down to zero meters per second and then land. I'm going to be landing on the Minmus flats, and I'm going to try to do that with as much horizontal velocity as possible to minimize the delta V that I have to retro burn with. The first Retro burn down from low Minmus orbit will put me on a trajectory that will drop me from orbit down to the surface of the flats. The limiting factor here is the mountains in the way. There's a mountain right on the approach of the angle I wanted to break on the flats that threads the needle between some islands on it. The lack of throttle on the solid rocket engines turned the final retro burn before touchdown into a difficult mathematical problem where I have to run out of altitude, vertical speed, and fuel in those engines all at the same time. It was also key that I touched down precisely flat with the rear and the front landing gear at the same level. Due to the low gravity of Minmus, to do otherwise would force me to roll either forward or backward and break the plane. Testing had determined this was going to be difficult, and to that end, I did have a literal metric ton of reaction wheels to enable this. After this, we had a very long run on the flats to break down to a stop, but the line that we had landed on gave us a lot of runway to work with, and we stopped in plenty of time. We have completed the objective of making it to Minmus, but the... Wheel braking on the landing has saved enough delta V that we have 356 meters per second remaining, which should be enough to actually get us home to Kerbin. Almost all of that delta V is in the kickback engine, so we're going to be using those to get us home to Kerbin. We're going to use all the runway we have available to us, so we're only going to be using one kickback engine at first, and that's going to bring us up to orbital speed on the flats. Once at orbital speed, that one burns out, and we're going to be burning the other kickback engine to eject us home to Kerbin. And arguably, by accident, burning them one at a time has given us just enough clearance to clear the mountains at the edge of the flats. This ejection from Minmus has given us a periapsis on Kerbin of about 50 kilometers, which is a good altitude for us to break back down to a low Kerbin orbit and get ready for landing. The weight balancing I was able to do in this means that this flies quite well and any deorbiting approach we have on Kerbin is going to allow me to land back at the Kerbal Space Center. After breaking in Kerbin's upper atmosphere, I'm going to coast around Kerbin until the Kerbal Space Center rotates into the proper position. And for the final approach, I'm going to do some flybys of things around the Kerbal Space Center to send this mission off. So while the landing approach is underway, let's look back at the mission and think about some things that I might have done differently. One thing that I already talked about is I should have had separatrons to do the extremely fine adjustments with. The other thing I noticed was that even two kickback boosters was too much. We actually didn't need quite that much Delta V to return from Minmus. So getting rid of one more of the kickbacks and putting even more shrimp boosters on there would have been great. There's also a lot of other challenges that could be attempted with a single stage of solid rocket engines. Certainly there's enough delta V to get to anywhere in the Kerbal system. Not necessarily land there, but if there's an atmosphere as there is on Lathe or Eve, you could certainly land there. It does seem like 
I was short some of the Delta V necessary to land somewhere like Elu, but maybe there's some approaches that I haven't considered yet that would enable that. I am very interested to see who has a go at some of these challenges. The one warning I will issue is that while the fine corrections to do gravity assists are possible, the limitations of the solid rocket engines make it a very time-consuming process. And that brings this mission to a close. We've taken Bill Kerman from the Kerbal Space Center to the surface and Minmus and back on a single stage of solid rocket engines. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.